Hello everybody, it's SOD Man Haven here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the E75, what the king should have been. Now, the E75, this has a special place in my heart, probably because I loved the crap out of it back in beta, and it was probably one of the first year tanks I went after. Now, the E75 is one of those tanks that has gone through a massive change over the years it has been buffed debuffed buffed again debuffed again and on and on and on other than the panzer 54 the e75 is probably the second vehicle or the first vehicle to have the amount of debuffs and buffs applied to it over the years it still holds up very well inside the tier 9 rating that it holds it's still comparable to 10s even though it's a 9 as long as you know how to work your armor inside this tank, it is fantastic. Now, let's go ahead and jump straight into the engine here. The engine at 1200 horsepower, along with 14.34 power to weight ratio, holds up really nice. You know, that 14.34, it is a heavy tank. You're not expecting these things to be exactly the fastest, except for this has a 40 top speed and a 15 reverse. 15 reverse, especially inside of something known as a super heavy, is, oh man, getting in and out, the pop shots, the accuracy of the weapon, this tank is phenomenal. View range at 400 also just helps this tank so much. I don't even run coded optics on this sometimes. Usually I focus on gun rammer, vertical stabilizers, and improved ventilation. Now, jumping over to the gun, we have a 15.7 base reload. Absolutely disgusting base reload. However, you can get this down to a 12.46 with improved ventilation, gun rammer, brothers in arms, and 100% train crew. Oh, and the premium consumable. There we go. That was on my mind. Aiming time at 2.9. Not exactly the greatest aiming time, but hey, you know what? For the alpha this thing packs... Totally fine. Your standard penetration is 246. The premium we will take a look at here in a second. Your accuracy is at 0 0.38. 0 0.38, not exactly the greatest accuracy for gun dispersion values. Moving, everything else, depending on how you have your crew trained out, 0 0.38, you can really get it down. Especially with the vertical stabilizer stacked on top, smooth ride, and snapshot. That helps out a lot with high dispersion value tanks in order to take snapshots at long range and medium range. 8 degrees of max gun depression, 15 degrees of max elevation. The 8 degrees of gun depression helps out a lot as well inside this tank. And the replay that we have coming up, 8 degrees wasn't enough, but you're going to see what I do in order to be able to shoot my target. Jumping over to the tracks, we have a base 21 degrees of rotational speed, terrain resistance, uh, standard 1.1, 1.2, and 2.2. Now, in the order it goes, it is hard, medium, soft. You're going to lose half your power to weight with a little bit extra whenever you hit the soft ground at 2.2. But at 1.1 and 1.2, you're not going to feel big of a difference on the hard and medium. You're not going to notice a big change in anything, really. Your tracks on this, they are massive. They do take a 120 or a 105 to break. Sometimes 105s get absorbed. 120 or bigger will track this vehicle. Jumping over to the turret here, 400 degrees, 400 meters. Sorry about that. Of maximum view range. We already went over that. 18 degrees of rotational speed. This thing's not exactly the fastest on rotation at all. But the rotation is not where this tank gets all of its strengths from. The ammunition here. Standard rounds travel at 920 meters per second. They are not the fastest, but your premiums at 1,150, those are pretty fast. Your high explosives have got the same travel speed as your standard APs. Now, just a heads up and a tip. AP rounds have a 5 degree adjustment, which means whatever you are shooting, they will correct the degree by 5 degrees. So if a target is at a 25 degree angle, it will actually act like you're shooting 20 degrees. So, 88 millimeters at 20 degrees, you should be able to go through with 246 pin and a 128 millimeter gun. APCR only readjusts by 2 degrees, which means it never makes contact at a 25 degree angle, it's going to be a 23 degree angle, but the penetration that you have as a bonus is going to help out a lot. 
Now, jumping over to the armor here, the thickest plate on this is your turret at 252, plus it has a slight angle, making the effective value of this turret 270. Jumping down to the top plate here, you have over 160 millimeters. 160, especially at the angle it's at. Look at that, nice and deep. Not just that, the 8 degrees of gun depression coming over a ridge line or using some rubble, that plate is going to be almost impenetrable. The lower plate on this at 130, especially the angle on this, you have a nice good diamond shape in the front there. Just triangle tip or corner square, just really, really deep square. Now, third, 130 on the lower plate, you can actually pull a fakie. You can take a move and hit a corner just right and make somebody shoot your lower plate. And sometimes people will, will do this, or if they're a more experienced player, they're not going to shoot you. And if they don't shoot you, I don't recommend rushing because your side armor here can get overmatched by just the simple shell going straight through. So track and damage. Even though it's 120, this tank is fantastic for side scraping. Your side armor on the hull at 120, the side of your turret at 160 and 180 in some places because of the track arrangement that is located on this. As you can see the tracks, they count as additional armor. However, keep in mind this tank is on the old armor model. There is no spaced armor, except for the armor that is known as the tracks. There might be a very small amount of spaced armor there on the side at 5mm, but that was recently added as spaced armor, probably about a year ago. But it's the only spaced armor that it has. So the tracks up top, it'll take them a while to implement the spaced armor into those tracks, but honestly, they don't need to because you already have the 20 millimeters of extra protection there. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the packages. Wrong package. There's multiple packages. You have a competitive 105 with 225 and 285, but the best package for this is going to be the 12.8 centimeter KWK44L55, the final package. Jumps up your engine power to 1200. Your premium penetration is at 311. Your explosives are at 65. Your standard alpha at 490 is probably the best part about this tank. A lot of 120 millimeters, they're going to be looking at 400. And then some 122s are going to be looking at 390 to 440. The advantage of this tank is that it does a little bit more for the alpha. The downside is you have a longer reload time. Now, let's go ahead and jump right into this replay on El Haloof. Look at that, we have two El Haloof replays. Now, we are top tier. Our entire platoon is nine. And then it's a ton of eights and sevens. The enemies have got a lot more nines than us. Not by much, just two. An extra two T-30s. And starting off, you know... El Haloof, there are a lot of positions in this map for heavy tanks to take control of. Now, this is an encounter battle. There are two types of encounter battles on this map, maybe three. You have the first encounter that spawns at AB12, and then the second one that spawns over at F6. And I do believe that there is one more that spawns around E5. But I haven't ran into that map in a really long time. If it's still in the game, it'd be pretty cool to run into it every once in a while. Now, this match was recorded with the same person that we gave the M48A2 Dread Dozer to. So, I don't want to get a lot of gameplay during the uh, True Vision event and the plus one, minus one. I find that to be a... Uh, I'm not a big fan of True Vision, but the plus one, minus one, I absolutely love it. It's, it brings a lot to the game. I don't think that they should permanently implement it into the game just because if they do, you're, you're just going to lose out on a lot. I think if they were to do it like every other weekend, that would be the best way to do plus one, minus one. Plus it would get more people to log in on the weekends. You know, like you, you log in on the weekend to play the game and suddenly you're capable of making money and screwing around inside your tier eights. Now... The position that we're going to take inside El Haloof here is first we wanted to come up because we're the first ones in the fight. We want to make sure that no one is taking that side corner there. So we push up. We're just trying to see if we can spot anybody 
hit the cap, let them know that we're there. Just a little tap to make it pop up on the screen and then fall back. Now, the corner that I'm looking at right now, there is a little slant right on the bottom that if they do be a little bit of aggressive and they want to try and push up and take a pop shot, most of the time the tracks in lower hall will pop out there. If you take a shot in that general direction or if you're already pre-aimed, most of the time they have to fully expose their track and lower hall just in order for them to get a shot on you from there. So you have first shot advantage. Now I'm swapping over to premium rounds because uh, Blade right there is saying that there's a couple of heavily armored tier 9s already moving up on that top ridge and I just want to make sure that we're not going to have many issues because if you take a look at the map, we're pretty widespread. And it starts off nice and slow. Krampan's a 50 ton. That is a medium tank that is basically a heavy. You get that thing in a haul down position and they don't know where the weak spot is, which we will be showing off that weak spot pretty soon. Fantastic tank. And premium rounds are already doing some nice, beautiful work in the Object 432. Both of the T-30s are already up here. So we're just going to try and bait them into taking shots, move forward and backwards. This spot right here that I'm at, really powerful position. You're capable of, well, we're going to give it a second before I make that call out on what I'm going to be doing. Now, the E-75 to my right, he's not fully upgraded. And you can tell that by the 1,820 hit points that he has compared to our 1,920. He probably still has the Tiger turret with the 105 equipped, or maybe the 120. Now, right there, the rock's off to my left. Since I only have 8 degrees of gun depression, rather than fully exposing myself and exposing my lower plate, all we did was hit the rocks on that little slant to give us the extra gun depression that we needed to take that shot into the E-75. And already, within the first four minutes of the match, we're setting a 2,000 damage. No damage taken yet. 900 ricocheted. And against the two T-30s, I am trying my best to keep an eye on the map and situational awareness as much as I can. And bouncing a premium shell from the 430 right off the top plate, that 160 is just amazing. E-75, it, it's got to be probably one of my top 10 tanks, maybe even top 5. And just the side armor at work for side scraping. I don't see any marks on the side though. And hit the ammo rack of the Krampanza, which means he's already wasting a repair kit. We get him tracked anywhere else. One repair kit gone. If he's running a double repair kit, which I find to be... Sometimes running a double repair kit can be helpful. But it's like if you get tracked once and let's say you're getting hit by an autoloader. Within the course of the next three seconds, another shell's going to hit you there. So using a repair kit... It's like a 10% chance to get away from him before he tracks you again. So usually I just run one repair kit, one medic kit, and then a premium consumable for that extra 10% to my repair time, reload time, view range, and everything else. Now, I didn't want to rush that T30 because I know that there's a couple of mediums on my right. And if I would have went and pushed out, they would have already dropped down and my rear end of, would have already been getting penetrated, which I'd rather not. And the weak point of the Crom Ponza 50 ton is the viewport on the left side. It's only 200 millimeters with 20 millimeters of spaced armor, maybe even 30 millimeters. Now, T-30 already took a shot. T-30s, they run a 155 millimeter gun with 276 base penetration. And here's his disadvantage. We're loaded. He's probably still reloading with that nasty 16 second reload time. Trade off, 800 damage a shot. Fun tank. Now, the rest of the match is a little bit slow. We're going to monologue a tad bit. But overall, the E75, it, this is one of those tanks that y you get in it, y you have a blast. There's not a lot to go over. It's. A tank that has been through a lot. The amount of debuffs that they have put on it and just everything that they've done to it. They've buffed it back up. They've 
debuffed it. Then they buffed it again. And it was like one of the times whenever they first debuffed this tank, it was almost unplayable because they lowered the top plate from 180 because it used to be over 180 or 190 back in year one and then they dropped it down to 130 less than the tiger 2 and that it, you were getting overmatched by tier eights they, they would just go right through your top plate and then they bumped it up to 140 and once they started doing tier 9 ranked gameplay they noticed that 140 was just not working on the E75, so they bumped it up to 160. And then they left it. And Equalizer, Artillery, hitting that 120 millimeters of side armor and still doing almost 600 damage. Artillery reminds me of a meme. The meme where the lady on the news was talking about, this is an assault rifle. Click, click. 12 gauge to a pumpkin you know <laughs> first time I saw that I laughed so hard because artillery was the only thing that came to mind now the premium rounds inside this I the reason why I load 20 of them with the 317 base pin I might have just gotten the base pin wrong I'm actually going to double check that and if I don't up, holy crap what am I doing Packages. 311. I was 6 off. I was really close. Thinking of the 60 TP. But. You end up against a lot of 10s. And they've been buffing a lot of 10s. And applying a little bit of debuffs to a couple of them. So I, I loaded more premium. And look at that nasty little snapshot. Ooh. Gotta load the mid-range ones. Now, a lot of the tier 10s that they're buffing, they're not touching any of the tier 8s except for the most recent buff that they put on the uh, the Bison, the T-103 tier 8 tank destroyer. They lowered the reload by one second, dropping it down to like 8.57, and that reload on that tank is just nasty. It is just super nasty. Now, tier 9s, they're not getting as much love as they used to. And a lot of the buffs that they are applying the 10s, like the AMX 30B, the Waffle, I find that the most recent one that they added that, where they dropped the 4 shots down to 3 and the 6 down to 5, but they lowered the reload. Um, they did buff it, giving it like a, a 33 second reload at first, and then they jumped it up to a 37 second reload adding a few more onto it because beforehand it was reloading almost just as fast as the Kronenwagen and dealing more per clip with a two second inner clip reload. A lot of the tier 9s, if they're going to be buffing tier 10s the way that they are, they're going to have to buff the tier 9s in the same way and they're going to have to screw around with some of the tier 8s. Now, tier 7s and down, um, a lot of tier 5s, they don't have a a lot of hit points. Um, best comparison would be the T1 Heavy compared to the Panzer 5.4. The 800, almost 900 hit points on the Panzer 5.4 compared to the T1 Heavy that only has 660. You cannot win a trade match against a Panzer 5.4 in a tier 5 in a head-to-head -head fight. That is just a waste of time. Now, Another thing is, is uh, the last player alive is a T28 HTC. And <laughs> if you don't know what that tank is, it is a tier 7 premium matchmaking. Remember that, premium matchmaking, which means it never sees 9, it only sees 8. I'm in an E75, and the lower plate on this has an effective value of like 250 to 240 on flat land. That poor little T28 HTC premium rounds only get 245 penetration. It's standards at 198, comparable to the T29 105. Now, we just drive around for a while, so I'm going to go ahead and slowly fast forward, making our way back. The T28 HTC took out the Yoho. I completely, you know, I have to show this off. 
picked up my remote, and as I was grabbing it, I tapped the right trigger, firing my shell, and I was sitting there like, oh, are you kidding me? I did that. And we're just going to continue to scroll. Nothing exciting. Poor little tier 7 premium matchmaking. Never got a single shot through after that. And starting off, this is a high caliber, a mastery badge, and a Pasucci's medal. And I'm getting very close to my third mark. 5,489 damage. Uh, I had a platoon of five. We were still playing with uh, Brute during this time as well. Best part was we almost had a back-to-back -back for those matches with the T62, with the Type 62 that I put out a video on yesterday, and then maybe a couple matches later we had the E75. Now, the E75, this tank is truly amazing. It's something that I will probably never remove from my garage. There's a couple of them. The STI is another one. Now, I would like a recommendation for my next video. And I will probably be doing it during the True Vision event. So, put down in the comments what you would like to see. And I will probably either have to go grind it out or buy it back. I do have over 49 tier 10s. A couple of them are not in my garage right now just because of the most recent things that have been done. Like the increase to the reload of the E100. They increased it by two seconds, which made that tank just not fun anymore. So I sold it. And then the mouse, which, well... Big, fat, slow, uh, longer reload than most. Not a fan of it. I'm, I'm more of a medium, faster, heavy, and light tank player. Now, you guys have a fantastic day. If you like this little setup I got going for the E75, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. I try my best to get a video out every single day. And tomorrow, I will probably be able to get out my T1 Heavy review. That's why I mentioned the Panzer 5.4 compared to the T1 Heavy. You guys have a wonderful day. Until tomorrow. Heads up, I will be streaming today, or at least trying to stream. Hopefully, uh, Windows don't be a complete dick again. So, catch you then.